So eight years ago, we had a big idea at Disney. We were thinking about how we might be able to reduce the environmental impact of our products. And we came across a stat that said that one third of all of the waste thrown away in the US is made up of packaging. Now, as one of the largest toy manufacturers and licensors in the world, a category that is routinely overpackaged, we felt pretty responsible for this. And we, we also started imagining scenarios of where this trash would exist. We thought about when the fun was over, at birthdays or the holidays, when the gifts were opened, that our consumers were being left with a pile of trash with our brand on it, and we didn't like the dissonance that that created. So our big idea was that we wanted to disrupt the toy industry and rethink and hopefully revolutionize the way that toys were being packaged in a way that also made them environmentally more preferable. Now, what we did not know at that time is that it would be an incredibly long journey that would come with this idea, one that was much, much longer than any of us could have ever anticipated. But the reason for that was that every year since we've started thinking about this, we learned something new and we had to morph or pivot in order to create something that really was gonna work. The first year we started, we brought in our three biggest toy licensees to give us their honest feedback, and one would say they were not just honest, they were pretty brutal, about how it might be appropriate to integrate environmental thinking into the product development process and to show them some early concepts of a sustainable packaging technology that we had started thinking about. They gave us a lot of feedback, and that really redefined the way that we were thinking about this from the get-go. So we decided to do that again, and the next year, after we had integrated that feedback, we brought in 20 more licensees and some suppliers from the Disney store to test this pilot technology that we had built and to let us know again, brutally, whether or not this was gonna work for them. And they did. So year three, we again redefined the technology. We filed a patent. Year four, we invited the industry to review that technology, the, the Sustainable uh, Packaging Coalition, and again made changes to optimize the technology. Year five, we finally got our internal IT systems to integrate that technology into the existing product development systems that Disney was used to using every day. And finally, in year six, we officially launched the sustainable packaging technology with our four biggest toy licensees and the Disney store. In year, what are we, one, two, three, four, seven, seven, six, seven, a long time after we started, we uh, introduced our first sustainable flagship package at the Disney stores to start building awareness around what we were doing. Last year, we started rolling this out in our international markets. And this year, we're two months away from open sourcing the technology to the toy industry and beyond. So it's been a while. So what am I actually talking about here? What I've been describing is the Smart Packaging Initiative. And I'll point out right from the get-go that this is not a typo at the top of the page. Disney likes to invent words and brand everything. So Smart Packaging is now officially one word. Take note. And what the vision of the initiative is, is to not only improve the environmental performance of packaging, but also to create a better consumer experience so that they don't have to pull out their toolbox to open a toy, an experience that I'm sure many of you have had. What the Smart Packaging Initiative actually is, is a sustainable measurement and design tool that allows our packaging designers and our licensees to immediately have visibility to the environmental impact of their packaging designs when they're in the concept phase. So very, very early in the development process and long before these packaging designs are ever on a production line. The tool also gives designers the ability to get dynamic design guidance on the changes that they can make in order to make that pa package more sustainably, uh, more environmentally preferable. So it really takes the mystery out of creating a sustainable packaging design, makes it really approachable, and thus really encourages innovation um, from a sustainability perspective. That's what it looks like, I forgot to switch. But I, I wanna spend less time talking to you about the Smart Packaging Initiative and what that is and spend more time today talking to you about all the lessons that we learned over the last eight years. And really those lessons fall in two key categories. The first one are ones around building the program itself and the others are around bringing everybody along. 
And we'll start with building the program. So as many of you know, when you're trying to create something different in the sustainability space, it can not only be a difficult process, but often the data that you need in order to be able to do that does not yet exist. Our first lesson came really early in the, in the smart packaging journey when we had to physically reverse engineer over 500 packages in order to be able to catalog what the industry norms were of the environmental performance of toy packaging that was in the market at that time. Now, if you think it's frustrating to open one toy package, imagine the cuts and calluses that we had with three people having to do this for 500. It was pretty bad. But what we learned was that although this task was really intimidating, we couldn't shy away from doing the work that needed to be done, no matter how, mu how, how much it was grunt work, in order to really create something that would make a change and that would create a difference. As you probably saw from the timeline, we also have had to shift and pivot many, many times based on the feedback that we were getting from those using this technology and testing it. So another big lesson that we learned was that we really could not have a narrow vision of what we wanted the smart packaging to be. And I assure you, what we initially thought the smart packaging initiative was gonna be and what it is today is wildly different, but it's better. So we learned that we couldn't dig our feet in the ground when something wasn't going our way or when something wasn't exactly the way that we envisioned and instead that we had to learn to react quickly, to let go and to pivot and be flexible when we needed to be in order to create something that would really work. But it doesn't really matter how great of a tool you build and how many times you change it if nobody uses it. So as it probably comes to no surprise to most of you in this room that the biggest challenge we've had over the last eight years has been to motivate our internal and external stakeholders to change the way that they approach the product development process every day and come along this journey with us. To do that, communication and knowing your audience is key. Now you've heard this a lot, this is not news, but take one moment to look at the image that we had on our opening slide the first year of the Smart Packaging Initiative. Our intent was to shock our audience and to get them to immediately care about the innate cause that was behind the whole initiative and start creating change right away. But we are not all Christina Mittermeier and award-winning National Geographic photographers, and this image did not inspire at all. In fact, Within one minute, the, we started seeing our audience's eyes glaze over, and we had lost them. So what we learned that was for our audience, that was largely made up of creatives, both internally and from our licensees, was it was much more compelling for them to hear about how sustainability could drive innovation and storytelling, and to introduce them to an evolving consumer that was much more purpose-driven and that really cared about these issues, and less about dead seagulls. Although, they did find the plight of the seagull compelling and they were equally horrified that the Pacific gyre patch was as large as it was. The other thing that we learned was that while there's so much work behind something like the Smart Packaging Initiative and complexities like um, algorithms and life cycle assessments and weighting structures, that we did not have to bog down our audience with all of these details in order to build credibility for the program. Instead, what was more effective was that we had a simple message and a clear and easy roadmap that they could follow in order to get involved if we really wanted them to be part of this journey for the long haul. We also learned that if you do have seagulls on a slide, they should be alive and well as you see them at the top of this page. One of the other things that Disney has a habit of doing as a big, large company is that we are reticent to share things we're working on or share small examples of progress if something isn't fully baked and done for fear that it won't be received well. It's a pretty conservative approach and one that we learned very early on in the Smart Packaging Initiative. We would not have the luxury of employing because if we didn't include our internal and stakeholders internal and external stakeholders from the very beginning of the process and at every stage of the initiative, 
that we were just going to build something that didn't work and that all of those efforts would be for nothing. So while it can be very uncomfortable to bring folks into the fold when you're not ready, if you don't go in, we saw with um, ugly draft slides and unfinished ideas and being candid about the whole host of challenges that you're facing, you're not going to be able to ask for feedback, to ask for suggestions on solutions, or for help otherwise, something that was very, very important for us throughout this process. We also learned from a communications perspective that sometimes it can be much more effective to not say anything at all, especially when it relates to topics that are a little bit more complicated for many, and instead, that it can be much better to create a tangible example that tells your story for you in a way that no amount of words would be able to do it. For us, it was very important to have a tangible example of what the smart packaging initi initiative was at the Disney store in order to be able to communicate this or articulate this well for our consumers and for the industry. The package that we ended up introducing with Moana was unique in that it automatically came apart in the act of opening it, which optimized it for recycling. It was the first package that had the how to recycle label, and it also turned into a boat, so it extended the play pattern for the consumer. It was a very clear example of how sustainability um, could drive innovation in a way that truly improved the consumer experience and no glitzy press release would have been able to tell that story better than just interacting with the package itself. And finally, our last lesson, and the one that we've been really focused on this year, is around the evolution of ownership. Sometimes when you spend such a long time building something, let's be honest, you really want to own it because you want the world to give you credit for having created it. It's true, it's in all of us, I know. That said, what we found is that you know, the environmental issues that we're facing today are much, much bigger than any one company can own. And no amount of reputational benefit that any of us might be experiencing by, with any of the solutions that we're creating are worth compromising that. The Smart Packaging Initiative has been successful for us because we did not hold it tightly to our chests, and instead, from the very beginning, we opened up our arms to collaborating with really anybody that was willing to collaborate with us. So for that reason, in two months' time, although the Smart Packaging Initiative to date has only been used by Disney employees and Disney licensees, we will be releasing the tool, the methodology behind it, and hopefully, if legal allows, uh, I think so, the source code, so that anybody can use it, can more importantly improve upon it, and benefit from it. Because no matter who we are, it doesn't matter who's creating what solution. We've all created these issues that we're facing together, and we all need to own them and fix them together. Thank you.